<laughs> because the first Father's Day was brought up in 1907 in West Virginia after a mining disaster. And 361 men were killed. 250 of them were fathers. And one of the daughters of the men wanted to have a Father's Day that year, basically that year later. And it didn't happen because they had so many other events going on. But later on, in 1910, so on June 19th, they celebrated First Father's Day in Spokane, Washington. It was a daughter of a Civil War veteran, William Jackson Smart. He was a single parent who raised his six children in Spokane, Washington. And she being inspired by Anna Jarvis who started Mother's Day, she ended up starting Father's Day. So Father's Day, you know, y'all, is a day, so we y'all have some history about it. And then for the men, you know, who may even watch this on the website, Father's Day is about men that were fathers. Not just had a baby. Amen. But those that father their children. Amen. All of you that are fathers, again, we wish you a the best Father's Day ever. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let us bow our heads if you can get your Bible. I'm not going to be before you long, but I want to cover something. I thank God for everything that has gone forth. Amen. For all of you who came out. If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand because I want you to take a look at this. Amen. Chronicle. 
Amen. Second Chronicle, seventh chapter, fourteen verse. Reads as follow. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. Amen. These are the words of the Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. He said, then will he hear from heaven. Amen. Can everybody say, then will he hear from heaven. Let us say it again. Then will he heal from heaven. Amen. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. I don't know if you, my I'm pretty sure many of you, if you have not read it, you have heard somebody quote it because we as Christians like this passage of scripture. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is y'all a recipe, almost to say you could call it almost a recipe for hearing from heaven. Amen. Amen. Because you know what? Yo. Many of us and people around the world are in church today. Seeking God. Asking God. Requesting God. Looking for something from God. Looking to heal from heaven. Amen. They got situations and circumstances and all kinds of stuff, issues and things going on. And they're looking to hear from heaven concerning these issues, circumstances, problems. Amen? Hopefully they are here looking here from heaven. Some of us pick up the phone and hear from too many other people. Amen. But here is a recipe for hearing from heaven. He says, if my people shall call by my name, to humble himself and pray. That's the first thing. Humble yourself and pray. And see my face. And turn for your wicked way. Guess what? It's that simple. It's that, hey, y'all, it's just that simple. If my people who are called by my name, look, would do what? Humble themselves and what? And pray. Huh? Hold on, hold on, wait, we're going to start right there for me. Let's start right there for me. If they will humble themselves, look, this is the first step. 
humble themselves and pray. <clears throat> y'all know, y'all know, y'all, you, you, you know what? And I think I, I said this last week. Sometimes we wait until things really get bad before we pray. We really, you know, because we have like plan A, plan B, plan C, you know. Oh, plan D, you know, this don't work, I'm going to do this. You know what? Sometimes it'll work out quicker for us if we'll just humble ourselves Amen. and pray. Amen? He said, and then what? And seek my faith. And do what? And turn from your wicked way. So sometimes, you know what? If we're not hearing from heaven, we might need to start checking the list. Right. Have I humbled myself and prayed? <laughs> Have I sought his face? Okay, I did that. What if I turn from my wicked way? <laughs> King David. Hear me on this. Hear me on this. Please hear me on this. Because this will help some of us. Solomon was the son of King David. Solomon is now the king. Solomon had just built a temple for the Lord. One of the most extravagant structures ever built. Solomon built a temple that even today with the, uh, um, the, the, the buildings in New York in the, the 250 story building in Dubai and all of these different structures that they got today everything is always measured back to Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple was that Extracted. He built it with the best of the best. Solomon, look, he, 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 it was no cost or nothing to expense for this structure. He got the best wood, the finest gold. He had the best incense. He had the best of the best. He said, I just want the best. Amen. And we should want the best for the Lord. Right? Because how many of y'all want his fifth class blessing? How many of y'all want his uh, third class protection? You want the best. Solomon gave the Lord the best. He, hey, it was laid out. It was, it was like, it, 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 in your wildest imagination, it had big, uh, it, it had gold columns and big baths and, 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 and it had big um, statues of oxen around the baths and I mean, it was, it was like what you see in those movies with the, in each of the movies. Everything was huge and big and gold and silver and brass and incense everywhere. And it was just, it was gorgeous. In fact, they said it took them like four years to lay the foundation. Amen. Amen. It's very nice. He had just built that. Solomon got to build that temple. That And he didn't 
do nothing. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you also, as great as that may sound, and I'm saying this especially on Father's Day, that we, we deal with young men that going to be a father one day. That's not always good. Everything given is not always good. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes you need to earn some stuff. And you have a better appreciation for it. Amen. I know it'll get quiet right there. But let me tell you something. <laughs> this is why we struggle when trials and tribulation come. Because we don't think they're supposed to happen. But see, what we forget about God, He is our Father. Amen. And Father don't see things like Mother did. Amen. Amen. Let us look at this. He says to him, I mean, see my face and turn from that wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven. And it's so interesting that he said, Then will I hear from heaven because, see, Solomon had prayed this prayer. And I want us to go back. Go to chapter 6 right quick. And I want you to look at something right quick and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Because after Solomon built this place, Solomon did a dedication and Solomon had a feast. He gathered the people there. And if you look in verse 33 of chapter 6, Solomon started making these requests. Verse 33, then hear thou from the heavens. Do y'all see that? For even from thy dwelling place I do according to all that the stranger called to thee. For that all people of the earth may know thy name and fear as do as doeth thy people. And may know that this house which I built is called by thy name. He says in verse 34, if Thy people go out to war against their enemy. By the way, and thou shalt send them to the they they, they pray unto thee towards this city. Thou shalt choose or uh, have chosen at the house which I have built for thy name. Then he then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication and maintain the call. If they sin against thee. For there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemy. And they carry them away captive unto a land far off or near. Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried away, to turn and pray unto thee in the land of the captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. If they turn to thee with all their heart and with all their soul, and in the land of the captivity, where they have carried them to captivity, and to pray toward thee their land, which thou gavest to their father and toward the city. He says, verse 39, I'm going to skip down. Then hear thou from heaven, from the heaven, 
even for thy dwelling places, for their prayers and their supplications, and maintain their call, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. If you read through this prayer, Solomon comes and Lord, when we sin, as soon as we turn to you, forgive us. Amen. This is his prayer. And for a lot of us, you know, we would love for it to work that way. If I could just do my evil, right? And then just... Oops. It's over. What am I do? I'm going back. And I'm going to do my evil. And then I'm going to come back and go, oh, sweet. Right? Go back. 
Amen. The mother said, The people from the board, I, by the end of the scrimmage, I saw all the people coming, they were coming to talk to me. You know. I used to tell them, hey, sometimes I said, Coach, it's water break time. I said, no, we got to go a little bit longer because we got to learn how to outlast the other team. So one mother brought her son a juicy. She was hanging over the fence. <laughs> so I said, come get it. They come to the coach. See, mom, she keep trying to get her son to get it. I don't want that to get that. And I was thanking her because we had one for all the boys. We had big five gallon coolers for all of them. We were going to drink at the same time. We're drinking a little bit. Who's told me? My point about this is, y'all, I want to get down. See, y'all say that's crazy. No, that's not crazy. That's preparing them for their challenge. Because, see, when you get in the game, the game ain't going to stop because you want war. The game is not going to stop because your truth is coming out. The game is not going to stop because I got dirt on my mouthpiece. Put it in your mouth, spit the dirt out. You're going to be fine. Yes, sir. Amen. It sounds crazy. Sometimes it will be raining. And if it's one light, and I said, no, tell them practice. Because if the game starts, and, 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 and we ain't, and there is no lightning, brother, if it's raining, they got to play anyway. Tell them, lay in the mud. Get used to it. Yeah. It's a part of life. Amen. Amen. It sounds crazy, but I'm going to tell you something. See, what happened is, when you don't do that to them, they think everything going to come to them. And then all of a sudden, guess what? They either, their father had And now they're under pressure. And you know what? They're not used to being pressured. So when they pressure, now they lock up. Because they don't know how to handle pressure. You know what? Hey, let me tell you something. See, they were getting that pressure back then. Before they got to that point. Hallelujah. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You said, Pastor, what this got to do with this here scripture? Look at verse 13 in chapter 7. In fact, go to verse 11. I want y'all to look at something. It said, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. This is in chapter 7, verse 11. And all that came in to Solomon heart he made in the house of the Lord. See, Solomon did everything he could in, in his heart for this house. He said, and in this house, he said, he prosperly affected. He said, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. And I have chosen this place to myself for a house of what? Sacrifice. 